people, it's me, Ani, and my pronouns are she and her, and welcome back to my channel for a new recent news video. I've read a lot of books recently, so let's talk about them all, but before that, I would just like to say that I probably will not be posting a December TBR this month, just because there aren't a lot of highly anticipated 2022 December releases that I'm just really looking forward to, but with that said, I'm hoping that December will be a really good reading month, so expect a lot of recent weeds videos, and also I'm expecting my upload schedule in December to be more sporadic than concrete than previous months, just because I have upcoming finals, and I'll be working a lot over Christmas break, so anyway, all I have to say, the first book on this list is called Stella Loon, for those who don't know, this is the ninth book in the Keeper of the Lost Cities middle grade fantasy series that I've been keeping up with since literally 2012. I love this series so much, although with that said, I had very low expectations for this book because it's been two years since I've read anything in this universe, since I think book eight was published in 2020 or at least in 2019 if I'm not mistaken, since I never read book 8.5. You know what I mean? Anyway, the point is, this book was so good. It was such a wonderful, lovely surprise, and I'm so excited for book 10, although I think that it would be bittersweet, since I'm pretty sure book 10 is the end of that series, you know what I mean? And since I've been keeping up with the series for so long, like, I'm really excited for it, but I'm also nervous, since it will also be the end. But anyway, all that to say, this book was so good. The world building is so imaginative, and it's so inventive, and it's so so immersive, the plot was so intriguing and so engaging and absolutely so fast paced, the characters are so well developed and so distinct, I love the found family in this series, I love the family dynamics, I love the friendships, the romance was so cute, literally this book is so good, I rated it 4 stars, which was a nice surprise because like I mentioned before, First of all, it's been like three years since I've read anything in this universe. Second of all, I think I rated the last book in the series three stars as well. So anyway, all that to say, this book was a really, really solid sequel and I really, really enjoyed my time. So with that said, I would highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called The OK Witch. This book is a middle grade urban fantasy graphic novel that follows a young black girl who discovers that her family's witch history and the town's history are both connected. This book is absolutely so good and I really, really enjoyed it. First of all, the illustrations were so vibrant and they really made the story so much more immersive than it already was. The plot was so intriguing and so engaging and absolutely so fast paced. The characters were so well developed and so distinct and I loved the friendships in the story because they felt so wholesome and so well done and the story is absolutely so well paced and the family dynamics, especially between the main character and her mom, felt so well done and so good. This book is absolutely so good and it dissolves all of its hype and so much more. So with that, I would highly, highly recommend it because I rated this book four out of five stars because I enjoyed it literally so much and I will gladly read more from this author in the future. I'm not sure if they have more books out or not, but at any rate, this book was really, really good and it was so awesome. With all that said, I would highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called The Do-Over. For those who don't know, this book is a YA contemporary following a young girl who's reliving the worst Valentine's Day over and over again. And I had really high expectations for this book, and it was on my November TBR because the author previously wrote Better Than the Movies Last Year, and that book was one of my almost favorites of 2021. And this book definitely lived up to those expectations, but however, I would say that it didn't exceed them, and I do prefer Better Than the Movies, but this book was still really good, and I rated it four stars, and I would highly, highly recommend it for these reasons. First of all, the plot was so intriguing and it was so engaging without feeling like redundant or like annoying because again, she's stuck in a time loop. Second of all, even though the time loop did end like earlier than I anticipated, the ending still felt satisfying, if that makes any sense. The characters were well developed and distinct. The romance was so cute and it was so well done. This author is so talented and this book is absolutely so good and I really, really enjoyed it. It's like so good and it's so wholesome and it's so awesome and the entire thing felt so like intriguing and engaging and so well paced in every single element. You know what I mean? Like this book is so good and it deserves so much more hype. So with all that said, I would highly, highly recommend it. The next book on the list is called The Okay Witch and the Hungry Shadow. As you've probably guessed, 
This is the sequel to The Okay Witch, which I've talked about previously in this video, and this book was so good. It was such a solid, awesome sequel, which was really nice and satisfying to read, because honestly, lately, and I've said this before, but like a lot of sequels have been disappointing me, and this book was so good. I loved how the author expanded upon the already imaginative and immersive and totally like new inventive world building. Literally, this book is so good. The illustrations, again, were so vibrant and so well done. The plot was so well paced and so intriguing. The characters were so like authentic and so well developed and so distinct. I love the friendships. I love the family dynamics. I loved like everything about it. This book is so good. This author is so talented. I will gladly read more from them in the future because literally this book is so good. This story is so immersive and it's so wholesome and it's so awesome and I rated it four stars. So with all that said, I would highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called Sweet and Bitter Magic. This book is a YA fantasy following a teen witch who is cursed to never love, who meets a girl who is hiding her own dangerous magic, and the two of them strike a bargain to help save their queendom. This book is absolutely so fantastic, and it definitely exceeded my very, very low expectations, and I had super low expectations for this book, because actually the first time that I read it last year, I DNF'd it, and I didn't think that I would ever pick it up again. But I had a lot of free time over Thanksgiving break, and I had a lot of patience as well. And I read this book and I finished it, and it was absolutely so good. It was so awesome. And now I have such high expectations for the author's 2023 July book, which I think is called The Third Daughter, I believe. And it's another YA sapphic fantasy. So anyway, I'm so excited to read that book because this book was so good. First of all, the world building felt so awesome and so immersive and so inventive and absolutely so intriguing. The plot was so engaging and so well done. And the story was so well paced. The sapphic romance was so slow going and it was so well done. I personally prefer slow burn romances over insta love and this book did it so well because the two characters were so well developed and so distinct and I love the dual narrative so much. Literally this book is so good and it's so well done and I just thoroughly really enjoyed every single step of the way. Literally this book is so good and it deserves all the hype and so much more. So with all that said, I rated this book 4 out of 5 stars and I would highly, highly recommend it. Speaking of books that I DNF'd the first time, only to give a second chance over Thanksgiving break because I wasn't worrying about assignment deadlines all the time, the next book on this list is called An Arrow to the Moon. This book is a YA magical realism contemporary retelling of Romeo and Juliet with Chinese mythology. And I'm hesitant to say that this book is contemporary because technically for me, it's historical fiction because it's set in the 90s, which I know for some people is contemporary, but for me, it's historical fiction. So anyway, the point is, this book is so good. I DNF'd it for the first time in April because this book was actually one of my most anticipated 2022 new releases because the author previously wrote The Astonishing Color of Africa, which I really, really enjoyed a few years ago. So naturally, I had really high expectations for this book. And naturally, I was so disappointed when I DNF'd it in April when it came out because I was so confused by all of the multiple perspectives and I didn't understand how they were all connected. But... With patience and with extra time over Thanksgiving break, I now understand this book. It's so good. Like the multiple perspectives worked so well and they felt so connected and so well paced. The plot was so intriguing and so engaging. The romance between the two main characters felt so awesome and so well done. And I loved them as characters too. Literally this book is so good and the magical world building was so nice and it felt so awesome. This book is so good and it deserves so much hype. Literally possibly as much hype as the astonishing color of after. Literally this book is so good and I really, really enjoyed it. And I'm so glad that I gave it a second chance because I rated this book four out of five stars and I would highly, highly recommend it. The last book on this list is called In the City of Time. And this is the only book on this list that I rated three stars because I rated the rest of the books on this list 
four stars, and here's why. If you didn't know, this book is a YA science fiction following a polyamorous pansexual main character and a transgender lesbian who are from different timelines who team together to save the Earth if they don't accidentally destroy it first. And this book was on my November TBR, and I was really excited for it because the author previously wrote an underrated great duality called Ink, Iron, and Glass that I really enjoyed at the start of last year. So naturally, I was so excited to read this book. And however, I have mixed feelings on this book because first of all, the queer representation was so lovely and it was absolutely so fantastic and it was done so well. The sapphic romance was so good and it just felt so natural in the two characters as well as like the other character because technically like it's a trio of main characters but there are only two perspectives if that makes any sense and this book was so good like the characters were so well loved and so distinct but for me the time traveling elements felt more confusing than intriguing so that's why i rated it three out of five stars because the plot itself was intriguing and it was engaging at the start but then it became too convoluted as the story progressed if that makes any sense so all that to say this book is three out of five stars for me i don't know if my review makes any sense because i felt like it was kind of all over the place but i always feel like that when i'm filming so anyway the point is i rated this book three out of five stars the queer representation was so awesome and i would recommend it but just be wary of all the time traveling elements so take that as you will so in conclusion i had a really good november reading month and i'm really hoping that december is the same i'm hoping to be able to upload twice a week for the rest of the year but i'm not completely sure on that so don't hold me to that but anyway i would highly recommend all the books in this list so if you enjoyed this video please don't hesitate to give it a big thumbs up comment down below the panda emoji if you made it all the way to the end of the video thanks for watching subscribe to my channel if you're new and i'll see you in my next video bye